In today's video, we are going to fix everything on my LS swapped 124 chassis Mercedes Benz, and it's starting right now with with a hood nipple. If you didn't catch the last video and you're wondering what that is, that this, this is a hood nipple right here. And it's meant to clear this throttle body, which we are going to fix. We're gonna clock this thing properly and make this 124 just a little bit more presentable. Okay, I cannot resist trying to just knock this thing out. It looks like it's poorly tack welded in. Oh, that's not fun. Ooh, look at that. Oh man, look at how bad of a job they did. It's not even welded all the way around. I bet you we can get this out. Look at I'm collecting all of the hood insulation. This thing is so silly. It's almost out though. Got my tetanus shot, don't worry. There we go. Hello. Yeah, this is so crazy. Release me from my prison, please. There you go. What, what? This is so bad. It's like they just kind of gave up. They were so anxious at the end, like, the last piece is the throttle body. What do we do? I want to drive it. Put a nipple on it. Okay. Goodbye hood installation. Hello, LS. We just have a few 10 mils on each side. And now I'm able to just lift the hood off and hold it perfectly flat just by myself because of how strong I am. Can you fit the hood of a 124 in a 15 passenger express with seating for eight and five scooters in the back? We're gonna find out. The van never disappoints. It's just too good. There's more doors over there. And they have, they have latches. Unlike the space van, it has no latches back there. And this van didn't cost like $2 million to build. Just pulled up to O'Hare Auto Body in Bensonville. They're gonna take care of the hood. And we'll come back later in the video and see what they've done. Back at the shop, let's get into this. We wanna move this throttle body over to this side. Let's disconnect it. Step one, get this tube out of the way. We have our four tens. Okay, then we're gonna flip this guy and these should line up perfectly. All right, let's just try it. Let's just do it. Cause we're doers, not talkers or triers. No, we're trying, we're trying, trying and doing. Next, I'm gonna suck out the power steering fluid and we're gonna loosen up this line right here. There we go, pulling this guy out. We're gonna lose a little bit more fluid, that's okay. Well, let's throw this throttle body on right here. So straight on, this hits the power steering reservoir. And if we turn it, it hits right here. Let's flip this guy around real quick. A little flippity doo da. There we go. Okay, so before we go too crazy, let's see if we can extend this harness out. I'm just kind of pulling it out from where it was. There we go. Oh yeah, this should reach. Plug this in. That's gonna reach, I can hide that stuff underneath. So that's gonna work. Let's go ahead and just bolt this guy all the way in. So this guy's bolted in and connected electrically. Uh, it seals, it doesn't hit anything. Claire's is a little tight over here, but totally fine. These aren't gonna move, so that's okay. So currently this would screw in down there and kind of be in this area. That's why it gets in the way of the throttle body. But if we had this piece screwed in and a straight shot here, and then it angled over to this guy, we would be good. I have an idea if I spread this out a little. Oh, that's steel. No problem. And then we feed this in here. Will it thread in? Oh yeah, no problem. It wouldn't before, it was hitting everything. Just needed to be tweaked a little. We're getting close. We are definitely getting close. Let's bend this guy a little bit this way, like that. If I can just bend this straight out, it's doable with this fitting. We can also move this around too. I'm gonna try that. The goal is just to straighten this out. We're gonna try the vise. I mean, I have the muscles to do it, but I just wanna use the vise a little. It's been lonely lately. I haven't been using it. Oh yeah, bending it back, cool. This guy looks much straighter. Let's go ahead and thread it in and see what I just did. Okay, let's thread it in there. Oh, look at this, we're touching. That's awesome. Let's give it a little bend to root. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so we can swivel this guy around right there. So that fits there. Do we just figure this out? Let's plug the connector in and, and, and see. I took the throttle body off so we can run this and I believe we can run it underneath there. I might've taken it. Oh, what's this? What's this? Oh, look at this cap. Wow. That was probably sucking in some unmetered air. So we found something else we can fix. Cool. I love when that happens. Let's pop this spacer off one last time. Yeah, this looks like we can hide all of this stuff in here. That's sweet. This is like an adapter harness. Yeah, that looks great. Now we got our connector there. We'll go back together with the adapter and you can't even see, it's gone. 
Give this the old Alex torque. Clickety clack clack. Can we just go ahead and bolt this on? Yeah, cool. So we can actually go ahead and tighten this lineup and call it a day. We're done. Plug this guy back in. Oh, like a glove. If the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Wait, so this does fit, so we're gonna convict. Convicting this throttle body to fit onto our LS so that once we get our nice shiny hood back, it won't need to have a hole in it, a nipple, the nipple hood. I am saving this nipple though. Not a lot of torque is needed here. All right, throttle body's on. Get some power steering fluid in here. Ooh, look at that aim, look at that aim. Do not spill, Alex. Do not spill on the belt. It's way better just to use a funnel, but I'm just trying to show off, that's all. Well, let's get our two back on. We're gonna fire this up, make sure everything's good. We're gonna put a brand new plug in to replace this little guy. And we're gonna use this as a little tray for our parts. Only makes sense. That can definitely cause running issues. We don't want that. It already ran pretty good, but you never know. All right, let's crank it up. First start with our corrected throttle body. <laughs> There's our, our belt squeak. We had that before. Tensioner and belt, we're gonna be doing that next, but yeah, no, we're good. Clearances are fine. Oh, this is great. Look at that, perfect hood clearance. Yes, we fixed it. All right, let's move on to fixing everything else, and we're gonna make this car look sweet at the end of this video. We're minting it out. While we fix about eight bajillion things, let's get these wheels off. We need some new meats which is tires, by the way. Some people from outside of the United States didn't get me last time I said meats. Meats is tires. I, why? I, I don't know. Whoa. I absolutely love these 17 inch mono blocks, but I don't like these super old tires right at the wear bars. And yeah, not in the best of shape. But luckily I just got my new meats, my new tires in the mail from my friends at PriorityTire.com. Priority Tires is an amazing website to buy tires from. Look at this, you can load it right up on your cell phone and they immediately offer a military discount. They also have a first time buyer discount and discounts for first responders, teachers, whatnot. I don't know of any other tire company that does this. And they tell you which companies are having a tire rebate so you always stay up to date. Look at the savings. Wait a minute, Mickey Thompson, $100 back? No way. The site is super easy to navigate so you can search by vehicle or by size and for this Mercedes, the 225, 45, 17s just fit perfectly on these mono blocks. So I'm gonna leave it with that. Hey, look at that. Those are the ones I got, the full ways. And I have these on my Caprice as well. And that's why I'm putting them on the Mercedes. I've had them on the Caprice for a few hundred miles and they're really nice tires. The tread pattern looks good. No complaints whatsoever with the full ways and the price is right. They have so many different brand tires. So if you guys wanna spend a little bit more money and go with say a Dunlop, they have Firestone, Bridgestone, Pirelli, they have Goodyear's as well. Oh, and one of my favorite things, free FedEx shipping. And I always get my tire within two days. It's crazy fast because they have warehouses in the United States all over the place. There's also a 90 day money back guarantee. And if you wanna save even more money, you can sign up for a Priority Tire membership, a ton of benefits in here as well. Now, best part is you guys can save 5% on your next order of tires or accessories if you click on my link down below and use coupon code Legit PT823. It's for a limited time, so click on that link, get yourself some new tires. And with that, let's continue on. Because our squeak noise is this tensioner feels horrible. Let's remove the tension. Okay. All right, we'll pull out our belt too. Could be worse, but we're gonna replace it anyway. Two bolts for the tensioner. And we have a couple of spacers here too. So we don't wanna lose those. It's clever. They have the exhaust bracket using one of these bolts. It's really nice. Okay, tensioner's coming out. One thing we have to do before installing the new tensioner is swap the pulley. As you can see, this is smooth and this is ribbed. Yeah, this pulley seems to be in really nice shape too. Smooth pulley going back on. We're good. Give this a little clean, why not, right? We're gonna be doing a detail later. There we go, look at that shiny pulley. New tensioner is going in and there's that exhaust bracket using this bottom bolt. If you guys saw the first video, you know that the AC belt flew off. It was just kind of sitting here, hanging out. So we're gonna swap out this tensioner as well. New belt, new tensioner times two. Yeah, and this belt's seen better days. Something happened here. I think this tensioner is bad. It seems weak. Yeah. That's really easy to do. A couple of 15s. This is so funny. Our old one has a 3 8 drive to release the tension. This one's got a baby little quarter drive. It's just so cute. Look at it. We have a new Continental belt going on. Nothing but the best for my LS swapped 124 chassis. Let's get our manly 
quarter drive in here. Oh, that feels much more springy. There we go. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. It's just so satisfying. Don't you love working on cars? Just fixing stuff, getting stuff done, getting dirty, getting sweaty, then going home and just reeking and then giving your loved ones a big old hug of, of grease sweat. Am I the only one? I don't think so. Okay, let's feed this new belt in. We're gonna go over the power steering under the water pump and we're over the AC, under the crank, on top of the alternator, on top of the tensioner. This is totally gonna fix our belt squeal. I can feel it. Last up, it's the cowbell. And the only prescription is more cowbell. All right, it's always a pain to get this over the water pump. A little trick here, a little brake clean. Spray it on there for temporary lubrication there we go and it'll slide right on and then we'll release the tension and there you go and the reason you don't want to use anything oily is that you don't want to get anything else on the belt this will just evaporate and it'll help you slide it right on so anyway with that let's start this up again and hope we have another moment of victory oh ho, ho, ho. beautiful no noise whatsoever. We are good. Woo! <laughs> For those of you guys who didn't see the first video, listen to this. That ain't no 300D. That ain't no 2.5 turbo. That's LS power right there, baby. Okay, next up, we have to replace that, that's the oil pressure switch. They are a common failure point on pretty much all LS engines and when they fail, the instrument cluster oil pressure gauge will go crazy. Usually it's pegged all the way to like 80 PSI or whatever the max is, um, but in my case, it will do that and then drop all the way down and then peg itself, it goes a little wild. But I've been here before, so it should just be a bad sensor or the engine's totally bad, one of the two. <laughs> So here is the issue with the sensor. It's raining nothing. Oh, there we go. Now it starts going crazy, pegged out. Yeah, it just bounces back and forth every once in a while. In order to remove this switch, we need a special socket. So this is sold specifically for this size oil pressure switch. See, this is a little funky, but it fits right in. So I've already disconnected the connector. So meow, we're gonna feel around, find this, there we go. Okay. This thing wasn't even really in there that tight, to be honest with you, but it wasn't leaking. Okay. There we go. Wow, and this looks new. It's not a good sign. So here is our old one, and you can see here they tried to use a different socket to get it off. They probably just beat it on there, and they might have damaged the inside of the sensor by doing that. Now we could just pop in a new sensor, but I just want to check mechanically that we have good oil pressure, so I've screwed in a mechanical gauge. Let's fire the engine up and see. I love you, LS engine. Please have good oil pressure. Oh yeah, we are good. Sweet. Let's get a new sensor in there. New sensor going in. Sorry, I can't really take the camera down here with me to show you guys. It's uh, there's just no room. But just imagine I'm threading a sensor into a block. Hang on, I'll just, I'll just show you. Right after this message from the Alex torque wrench. Click, 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 click. I don't know why I just did the the more you know, but in torque wrench clicks. And there's our new sensor. I made a little bit of a mess with the oil pressure gauge. It wasn't really threaded in all the way, but that's okay. We gotta take these valve covers off anyway to fix an oil leak, so we'll clean everything up later. All right, there we go. Perfect. Oil pressure cold is pretty much spot on with what we had on the mechanical gauge. And if we rev it, it goes a little bit higher. Sweet, we are good. Yeah, there you go. Now it's starting to warm up a little and go down. All right, perfect. But I'm gonna shut it off right now because we have to remove those valve covers uh, to do the gaskets. And remember, these are trick flow heads. They're like $3,000 trick flow heads. And some of you guys had commented that they might have these nice aluminum rocker arms, more expensive stuff we're finding. So let's go find it. So the coils have been relocated, I believe because of the unique exhaust, which I still don't even know what exhaust this is, but it looks really nice. But anyway, let's get these coils out of the way and all the wires are ran pretty well. And we're just gonna pop the boots off right here. We'll leave them on the plugs. If you guys were around for the last video, I pulled a plug and they're like brand new AC Delco. So no real reason to switch those out. 
Oh, it just sounds so good. Spark plug boot MS A B C ASMR. ASMR, right? I can't find my normal size extension and I'm just too lazy and excited to get this valve cover off. Oh, okay. I was gonna say we're gonna use the world's largest extension, which we did, but we also dropped the little bolt. That'll be fun to find. Great. Yeah, it didn't hit the floor either. Oh, I see it. Come here, little bro. I got you. Okay, wires can now go over there. We could leave some of these coils on. Like these first three aren't gonna get in the way of anything. Or no, hold on, this one will. And this back one will too. And then we have nine millimeter bolts, so they're probably standard. Gotta use our little guy back here. This is hard to get to. I love these little sonic ratchets. They are the best. Fine tooth, get in everywhere. Can't beat them. All right, that one's out too. Let's get this guy off. What are we gonna find? It's so much fun taking valve covers off. We can just use this as a handle. Oh, this guy's coming with us. Yeah, they just vented the PCV to atmosphere. Eh, that happens. Oh, what do we have? It's Halloween. I was gonna say it's like Christmas in here, but it's orange, it's Halloween. Sweet. Oh man, these are nice. Yeah, you can see back there, the valve cover gaskets were leaking a little bit, which is kind of rare on an LS. They might not have been torqued properly. Look at this, ARP head bolts, $3,000 trick flow heads, these rocker arms, which may or may not be required for the heads. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but do we have dual springs? Yep. We have dual springs. Oh man, this is a very, very nice top end. It's literally a nicer top end than my 1000 horsepower turbo Trans Am. Hmm. Could just take those, put them there. Take those, put them there. I could do that, but I'm, I'm not gonna mess with this setup. Everything works so well on this 300D LS. What do we name this thing? I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna fix everything and we'll leave it as is. Next up, you're gonna take a rag or an old Dr. Pepper t-shirt that you wore from age like 16 to 36. And that people have told you to maybe stop wearing. Maybe you should stop wearing that shirt. It's getting kind of old and crusty. Okay, but I, I, it's nice, it's a nice shirt. Anyway, it's a rag now. You'll never leave me, Dr. Pepper. For me, you were established like 15 years ago when I first started wearing you. I don't drink a lot of pop, but Dr. Pepper's my favorite. And yes, I say pop, I'm from Chicago. What do you guys, what's your favorite soda or whatever you call it? And if you're from Texas, I don't wanna hear that everything's called Coke. That makes no sense. Although we use Kleenex for tissue paper. All right, Texas, you got it right. Oh, look, they didn't have this installed properly. It kind of smushed out and you can see this indentation right here. So it's just leaking oil and what is this RTV they put in there? That's weird. Let's get rid of this guy. Oh, and look, these are Holly valve covers. Cool. On these LS valve covers, there are little grommets here where the bolts go through and you want to replace those as well. And they basically just pop out. Yeah, these were a little garbled up. This is what it's supposed to look like. Look at that. My gloves ripped already. Cool. And then you just slide these guys on like that, push it down. We're good. New blue valve cover gasket going in. Let's make sure we don't pinch it. And it should be okay. These last forever. I've even seen these at two, 300,000 miles. I've always been impressed with the gaskets on an LS engine. They don't really leak all that much. Okay, I've cleaned up the mating surface here on the top of the cylinder head. Now we can go back together. One last look. Just wanna make sure we're not pinching this gasket. There's plenty of room to work on this though. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Perfect. And we'll reinstall our bolts. World's largest extension. Snug them up. Get our ignition coils back on. Just 110 for these. And nothing really locates them other than you tightening them up. So you kind of got to line them up if you want to be a perfectionist. We'll throw our MSD wires on next. All right, good clicks on there. And then we have our harness. We have ignition. Yes. Valve cover job is done. I rerouted a few hoses as well. And I did this one too off camera. So we have both valve covers are complete. And I just noticed that there are aluminum spacers in between the cylinder heads and the intake manifold. So it just kind of raises it up a little bit. Next, we're gonna do a little bit of maintenance work. We have an air filter to clean and I have a feeling this is gonna be very, very satisfying. So a couple of tens and a clamp should come out the bottom. Gosh, you're not a 10? You're not a 10? How are you not a 10? Okay. Yeah. This thing is so dirty. This is gonna be awesome. This isn't a k and air filter. It's an air raid, but same idea. I'm using some old K&N cleaner that I've had around for a while. So we're just gonna soak this thing 
in this. And then we'll come back and rinse it. The stuff's been soaking on here for a while. Let's see what it looks like. Always clean this from the inside. You don't want the dirt to get further embedded in the pleats, but yeah, you can see all that garbage coming out. Look at that brown water, get out. Once the water starts to get clear, you know you're done, but spend a few minutes on this, get it all. All right, she's looking much cleaner, so now I just have to let this dry outside in the sun, and then we'll re-oil it a little later. While that air filter is drying, let's swap out the fuel filter. So this is a fuel filter from a C5 Corvette. That's what they used. There we go. We use these same fittings on my Chevy Express van when we did the big Aeromotive fuel system. So they have this nut that threads off and you remove that and then this will slide right off. So it's just an adapter to use this style fuel filter. And we just have an eight mil here. And there's nothing really wrong with this fuel filter. It's probably good. Now the C5 Corvette fuel filter has the fuel pressure regulator built in. So not only are we doing some maintenance, but if this had a fuel pressure issue, we'd most likely be fixing that as well. Although I don't think it does. For 15 bucks or whatever this costs, I'm down. All right, and then with these, they have the little slot there. So you put it on, slide this over, and then it's a little tricky to get going at first. There we go. And you just thread this guy in there. These are really nice fittings. I think they're like 20 or 30 bucks a pop too. Kind of expensive to build a fuel system with these. With that, the fuel filter is done. And had this been my swap, I probably would have done a little something more with the mounting of this, but it seems to work. We're almost done here with mechanical work and then it's on to a detail and a ceramic coating. We have a gigantic oil drain plug. It's a 19. All right, am I gonna spill it on the floor? Ah, I made it. I make a lot of messes with oil in this shop. Kind of stinks. And it's a pain to get rid of the oil. I need to like figure something out. I'm bringing in milk jugs and filling it up like a gallon at a time and then bringing it to various auto parts stores or like Midas, Pep Boys, stuff like that. I feel so bad dropping them off, like giving these guys work to do without not really buying anything. Well, at the auto parts store I am, so. Yeah, I need to find a service that'll come suck this up for me every once in a while. Magnetic drain plug here and didn't pick up anything. That's good. Okay, there's that. Uh, we're gonna do away with the only Ford part that I've been able to find on this. Not that there's anything wrong with Ford parts. I mean, there are some things wrong with some Ford parts, but I think, let's see, I own three Fords right now. Two out of three of them have bad engines. They're modified SVT, so not necessarily Ford's part there either. Wow, that's on with like no threads. Okay. I'm going back together, of course, with an AMS oil filter. And a lot of guys in my comments, if I pre-fill an oil filter, they will yell at me for pre-filling the oil filter. Then in some cases when I don't pre-fill the oil filter, I get yelled at too for not pre-filling it. Now in this case, I'm not gonna pre-fill it because of the angle that it's at. As you can see here, if I pre-filled this guy, we would have lost it all. But I just wanna go on record saying it pretty much doesn't matter which way you go. I guess the argument against pre-filling is that if there's any debris in the filter or whatever, you're kind of bringing it out. And then once the engine starts, you could put it through your engine but you're using brand new oil with a brand new oil filter, so I couldn't really imagine how bad that could be. Yeah, I think that's the only argument against pre-filling the oil filter. I still do it. If it's straight up and down, I just throw oil in there. Yeah, doing it for 20 something years, it's gonna be okay. So I guess at the end of the day, there are two people on this earth. There are oil filter pre-fillers and oil filter post-fillers. Which one are you? And then I guess there's people like me that sometimes pre-fill, depending on the angle of the oil filter. I don't know. And of course I'm using Amsoil Synthetic Engine Oil 5W30 for this wonderful LS engine. This is what I use on all my cars and trucks. Air filter has dried overnight, so now we can put a little bit of the oil on here. Don't need too much. Air filter going back on. Okay, a couple of screws to hold this guy in. Tighten up this clamp. That's good. Checked all the brakes. They look fantastic. And now we're going back in with our mono blocks. I get the rest on, it's going in the wash bay and we are gonna get to buffing and ceramic coating this entire car. It's gonna look so good. Clearly we do not have a hood yet. Uh, I should have it in a couple of days, but we have many hours of buffing to do to this car before the ceramic coating. So we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning it and I'll be able to clean up the engine a little bit as well. And I think this car is gonna shine up really nice. The car had been sitting around for a while, so it's just kind of dusty. clean out our little fender, fender vent, my favorite part. So thick. Look at the vents are disappearing. 
and foam. Okay, I'm gonna scrub this whole car down and let's clean up the engine too a little bit with the pressure washer. We're not gonna go too crazy, but we're gonna get into a lot of nooks and crannies to make that LS really look good. I've gone over this a few times, but be careful when you're washing engines. This has a ton of weatherproof connectors, so we're good. Um, but I'm just gonna use a little bit of this purple power degreaser, it's a general degreaser. And we'll get in here, put some on the end of our brush. And then we're just gonna go to town. Just kind of agitating all of this dirt. It's gonna look nice and shiny. I've gone around with the brush, covered up the alternator, and now we're just gonna do a light pressure wash. Just don't concentrate this into any of the electrical connectors and you'll be good. This engine is looking so, so much better. And the key to doing this properly is to immediately go ahead and dry it and then we'll run the engine too. All right, this is looking sweet. All right, I'm gonna run the engine here in a few minutes. We'll let this fully dry, we'll protect it later. It's gonna look great, especially, you know, with a hood once we get that. Um, all right, legit street cars drying towel. So we'll have this thing dry in like two seconds. One swipe, that's all you need. Cars all dried up and looking pretty. This is a great looking car. The LS looks so cool in there, although it is a little weird that they picked a 300D to do this swap because the 300D by itself, especially in this kind of condition, rust-free with nice paint, is worth a decent amount of money, but I'm okay with it in this case. And the engine is almost dry. I let it run for a little bit. We'll let that kind of air dry away and we're gonna treat it, make it look really shiny. But right now we definitely have to attack this paint because it's honestly just a little oxidated. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing too bad. I mean, there's lots of swirls and whatnot. Yeah, it's just pretty faded and scratched up. So you can see all these kind of more top surfaces kind of look a little gray compared to the side surfaces. So it just needs a really, really good buff. Yeah, look at all this. That's all gonna clean up. Oh man, this is gonna be good. You know I love my tape lines. Uh, so we have to do that because yeah, look at this, let's do it. All right, we're gonna go medium pad here coarser compound, Let's see what kind of cut we get. All right, first run at this. Let's see what we got. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I mean, this is probably original paint, that's for sure. Look at that, it's like a different color. Oh man, this is gonna be sweet. So I don't know how much of all this stuff we can get out, if that's realistic. And honestly, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna make this thing look, you know, like 85% better buffing it out and ceramic coating it. And I do believe this is a uh, single stage paint back from 91. Okay, let's see what we have up against our tape line. You gotta be careful with single stage. You can see here it does remove some color, that's for sure. There's no actual second layer of clear. So just be gentle. This usually doesn't come out as good as your traditional modern paint that has a clear coat. This is just how they kind of looked even after they're buffed. Let's see. Here we go, here we go. Tape line satisfaction. Okay, we went from scratchy paint to way less scratch paint with just one quick step. And if we take a step back, yeah, look at this. Oh, this car's gonna look great. All right, hang on, hang on. I gotta do this one start to finish. We're gonna do all the stages on this top part. This is so bad. We'll start off with our course. Wipe this off. Oh, I think we can just go 
Right to a fine now. Wow. Fine pad, fine polish. Let's see what she's really gonna look like. Okay, jeez, you gotta be kidding me. This is all the oxidation that's just kind of bunching up. We're like totally exfoliating the paint. This is awesome. Is this gonna be one of my best before and after tape lines? Is it? All right, let's see. Let me wipe the tape line away. Okay, so we have this. And then this. Wow, guys. This car is going to be a completely different color when we're done. You know, black is a pain in the butt to keep clean. Hey, there's me. But man, when it's buffed out and it just looks like a mirror, it's so beautiful. The style of this car, classic 126 with the gray bottom, monoblock wheels lowered. I like it. I like it a lot. Many hours later. That's, that's my SpongeBob. And we have an LS swapped 300D. That looks like this. We are not even done yet. It's got no tire shine, but most importantly, it's got no ceramic coating. Now you guys know I love my Armor Shield 9 DIY ceramic coating kits, but you know what I love even more than one DIY kit? Two of them. And right now for a very limited time, if you click on my link, you can buy one and get another one for free. So normally these are 75 bucks a pop, but you're gonna get two for 75 and they come with everything you need to ceramic coat your entire car. And if you can wax a car, you can definitely ceramic coat a car. All you do is literally wipe it on, wait 60 seconds, and then simply wipe it off. So this is gonna give you about two, three years worth of protection. It'll make your finish ultra hydrophobic so nothing sticks to it. And you can also treat the glass, you can treat the wheels so brake dust doesn't stick to it. And my favorite is the trim restoration. It's some of the best stuff on the market for trim restoration. So buy one, get one free, link down below. Let's mint this thing out. So I'm just gonna go around the entire car and ceramic coat everything. You know I gotta coat my favorite part of the car. The vents in the fender are not being used anymore, but I still love them. And once the car is clean, you could probably ceramic coat it in about an hour and a half. It's really easy. Like you can do this entire fender and then run over to the other side, do the other fender. By then it's been 60 seconds. You come back, wipe this one. It's, it's really easy and it makes it look so good. Ceramic coating is done and I wanna clean up the engine bay a little bit and yeah, pulled the battery out and we had this. This tray's in good shape, it's not rotted or anything, so let's take it out and spray it. There we go. Oh yeah, even more under here. But just look at how nice this car is though. This is all super solid. This is definitely an area where you can have rust out issues and this is perfect. Even has the factory cavity sealer from Mercedes. So let's get a little degreaser in here. No one's ever gonna see this, but it just makes me feel better. So much better. I'm gonna clean up some of this surface rust. All right, we're just gonna do a little black primer on here. Nothing too fancy, just something to protect it. All right, that is much, much better. And then I sand it down the backside as well. Okay, it's about 100 degrees out, so this is just drying right in front of our eyes. Look at this. It's been one minute dry to the touch. Cool. All right, I'll continue to let that dry while we clean the engine. And this flat stuff just blends right in as soon as it dries. The engine already looks really clean after degreasing and blasting it in the wash bay. And I like to use this as a final step. So this is Mud Slinger. It's actually meant to spray on the plastics of an ATV or a dirt bike and nothing sticks to it. And it gives it a nice clean look, but doesn't make it all greasy and slimy. Check this out. Sometimes those engine protection sprays, they just leave like a thick slimy layer and it attracts all the dirt. This doesn't do that. And it really does work well with engine bays. Look at that. So it'll give this LS1 intake this beautiful brand new look in just a few minutes. And then if you get up close, it's not greasy or slimy. It's perfect, so nothing's gonna stick to it. That's, that's what it was meant for. It was meant for dirt and mud to repel off of plastics. So here, we'll spray this down. It's gonna make it look so good. I use this on rubber hoses, really everything under the hood. I actually saw an old forum post from a long time ago on using it this way. So thanks to whoever wrote that on a forum like 10 years ago. I don't even know what forum I was on. So there's the intake pipe, and then we'll do the alternator and the power steering pump as well. 
and just generally all over the place. Hang on, this is about to look real good. And 20 minutes later, this is the final result. So I got in all the little nooks and crannies, went a little crazy here. And yeah, overall the engine bay is looking much better. This is dry and really hot. It's kind of burning my hand right now. So let's get it in. So much better. And luckily the brand new battery is totally dead. So I'm gonna get a new battery too. And we also, you know, we do need a hood. That's coming. I'm touching up the interior. It was already really clean. I mean, this is basically what it looked like when I bought it. Um, but just digging through under the seats, this is what we found. A pet smart receipt, a key, a lighter, some change, and a receipt for $400 for labor at the Mercedes-Benz dealer. And so that would be well after this car was LS swapped and it doesn't say what the labor was for. I'm so curious what they would have needed to do at the dealership only on an LS swapped 300D. What in the world? Oh, this dash is so nice. No cracks. Oh, wow. I hate when they leave the greasy slime look. There we go. That nice factory satin sheen is what we're looking for here. I just finished cleaning the leather seats and applying some leather conditioner. And this is a 1991, people. It's 32 years old. Look at the seats. The interior, man, they just, dare I say, they don't make them like they used to. This is so nice. Glass and interior is done. Can't wait to show you that outside. Uh, this is all dried, ready to go. And here is our brand spanking new battery. Definitely needed that 90 day warranty. The other one was like a week old. It was totally dead. I just got the O'Hare Auto Body and here is my hood. Wow, this looks beautiful. And the nipple used to be somewhere over here. It is completely gone. I'm really excited to see what the bottom of this looks like. Uh, but anyway, let's, uh, let's load this up in the van. It's, it's like glass. Guys, if I told you how much I love my van, we still have seating for eight right now and we can fit a gigantic hood. I've also fit a big go-kart back here with the seating for eight. It's just, it's so good. The hood is all assembled with the grill ready to go back on. And here's what it looks like from the inside. It's actually really nice. And normally uh, there's a pad that goes on under here if you wanna add that or not, it doesn't really make a big difference. But basically they cut out a square and then instead of welding, because that can cause shrinkage of the metal, they used a special epoxy to put the patch in. And I think it turned out great. Don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it. Look at that, beautiful. All right, who was drinking every time I said nipple in the beginning of the video? Hood's going on. So we can still see where these bolts used to tighten down for the adjustment. Let's see what we got. The hood is back on, let's get this thing outside. I'm gonna show you the whole car and then tell you what I'm gonna do with it. Oh, this car is cool. I never thought to have these kind of sounds inside of like this landscape. It's just, it's weird. <laughs> Ain't no diesel no more. <laughs> and it handles so good. It's a little autocross. <laughs> yes, the tires feel great. The handling feels great. The engine runs great. We fixed a bunch of oil leaks. It's a good car. God, they, seriously though, they, they must have replaced everything in the steering and suspension. This is too nice. Handles way better than the diesel did back in the day. And I don't know about you guys, but I love the sound. Listen to this. And the throttle response is just so good. It's just like, Wah. hello. <laughs> Normally driving around is not loud at all. I mean, they got the exhaust down. I really like it. Like, and it's comfortable. If you guys have ever been in a 126 chassis, the seats are awesome. It's super comfy. It's just a great car. Let me show it to you. I might've just said 126 there. I mean 124. Look at this beautiful, beautiful 124 chassis E-Class Mercedes-Benz 1991 300D turbo diesel. LS swapped, I don't know how many more things I can say. Monoblock wheels, lowered, gorgeous body. Guys, have you, I mean, seriously, how many of these old Mercedes are out there with this? Just no dents, no rust. It's beautiful, I love it. To me, this is one of those cars that just looks good at every angle. And I love the fact that they left the factory badging. It's just so clean and unassuming. Like just a little bit of driving around I've done in this car, it actually gets a ton of attention. People appreciate the old school Mercedes, especially considering how most of them look in the Midwest at this age. They're usually all dented up, rotted out and stuff like that. But yeah, this definitely did not spend its life in Chicago. I believe it was in Missouri 
And let me know guys from Missouri, do you not use salt in your area? It's very possible. We use rock salt here in Chicago and it's horrible. It just eats everything alive. And then also I'm not 100% on this, but I think this car only has like 100,000-ish miles on the body, like not much more than that. Uh, that was the last recorded history a few years back. I think it was like 109 or something like that. So it's a relatively low mileage vehicle, which is rare for a diesel. Usually these were bought to drive. So very curious as to what happened to the diesel engine. I think there's a very small chance that that engine died. They're rock solid. They did such a good job with the hood. The paint match is absolutely spot on. Uh, the roof is in great condition. Oh, and this is kind of cool. This was back in the day where the sunroofs were painted, in this case, black. So it wasn't glass that you could see through. And I didn't have to do a whole lot to the interior. I spent, I don't know, maybe about an hour just vacuuming it and just treating all the leather and all the surfaces like the dash and it turned out really nice. I think the gauge cluster is super cool. These are Dakota digital gauges. Nice little touch. Dashboard isn't cracked. This I'm not a huge fan of, but you could throw probably a factory shifter out of something and it would look a little bit better. But overall, excellent condition in the interior. Even the driver's seat looks good. Look at this super comfy back seat. Just look at, oh man, you guys, if you've had one of these cars, you know, but it's so good. Just everything on these old cars feels phenomenal. Great material, super high quality, lasts forever. Even the headliner on this car is nice. Hang on, I gotta show you this engine one more time under the sunlight and here it is all cleaned up. So you guys saw most of the cleaning, but I did a little bit of tidying up off camera as well, just with wiring harnesses and the way things were routed just to make it look a little bit more proper. The area under the battery that you really can't see is cleaned up and there's some other areas that I just sprayed with the flat black that just kind of make everything blend in and just, just look a little bit cleaner. So overall, I think they did a great job on this swap. The engine fits in there perfectly. Nothing vibrates or rattles. The exhaust is ran very well. Now that we have the throttle body fixed, nothing is hitting there. Everything just, it just works well. The fans kick on when they're supposed to. And I recently found on the internet that this swap was done a long time ago. Like it's been on the road. I think it was like 2017 or something was the earliest i've seen this ls swapped online so maybe it was a little bit before that i really don't know but it's been on the road for i mean let's just say at least five years like this and i can see why it's just it's just a nice complete reliable setup okay goodbye ls engine hello freshly painted hood beautiful 124 now what am I doing with this car? You may be wondering. So if you guys saw the first video on this car, this is the second video and pretty much the final video on this car because we're done with everything. But in the first video, I'd mentioned that I wanted to do something similar to a story I'd read about where a guy traded a red paper clip like 15 times, traded up every time and eventually got a house. I said I wanted to do something similar, but not exactly the same. And I should have been more clear about this, but a lot of you guys said that what I did by trading my Honda Katie's for this car wasn't like that and then also people said I got ripped off and then also people said that this doesn't count as a trade because I added cash on top I put four thousand dollars on top of it um, so let me I guess just explain a little bit better this would be done over many many trades and the end result would hopefully be something that's more valuable than what I have into the entire trade process so I had seven thousand into the Honda Katie's I added four thousand cash and then about another $1,000 worth of parts for everything you just saw here. So I have 12,000 into this car. Now you guys can agree or disagree with if you think that this car is worth that, but I do, I think it's worth probably around 15,000. So as long as I'm right and I can trade this car for something that's worth, you know, more than I have into this 12,000 or more, or I sell the car for more than 12,000, then I'm good. I mean, I'm taking little baby steps here. I don't think it's worth much more than that, um, but that's the point. And then after so many trades, hopefully I'll have a car that's way more valuable. Now, the one thing I'm going to change from that is I'm gonna open this up to either selling the car or trading it for any other car. I'm gonna take out the prerequisite that it has to be engine swapped because I've come to the realization after getting another engine swapped vehicle that you guys haven't seen yet that there's always a lot of stuff I wanna change on them. The swaps need to be finished and whatnot. And this car's pretty good, but I think if I'm gonna have an engine swapped car, I just need to do it myself. So I'm opening this up to trading this car for anything. I value it at $15,000. You guys can email me at legitstreetcars at gmail.com with anything you have to trade, or I'll straight up sell it and we're gonna continue to roll this money in and eventually hopefully have something that is worth more or I completely fail at this. I'm a bad car trader, bad car salesman, and I should just stick to fixing cars. That, that could happen too, guys, I don't know. So let me know in the comment section, what do you think this car is worth? Check out the value of super clean 300Ds. 
comment down below. Do you think I'm gonna get 15 grand for this car? What do you think I'm gonna sell it for or trade it for? I'm not offended, guys, so just, just let me know. You can say it's worth absolutely nothing if you want. Some people do that. But either way, I'm going to enjoy this car for however long I still own it. It's so clean, it's ready to go. So anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed this little mini two-part series on this 300D LS swap Mercedes. And if you did, give this video a big thumbs up. The YouTube algorithm loves that. Drop a comment down below, share the video with your friends and family, subscribe if you haven't already, and most importantly, have a fantastic day. I will see all of you in the next video. Cue that music. Oh wait, no, we have bloopers now. Stay tuned for bloopers. Okay, let's get right into this with my least favorite part of this car, and that is this just abomination of a, a, a yeah. All right, let's get right into this with, um, okay, let's get. It's something nice, all right? German? Oh, then don't let it go. Yeah. yeah, that looks fine with the bracket. I'm gonna, yeah, that looks, let me do this. Don't remember. Yeah, that's not right, okay. I can just use this as a, as a focus, focus. I'm not doing this on a table. I'm literally holding it up to put it on. I'm kind of okay. Yeah. All right. The argument, uh, the argument, yeah. Plain and grinding. Excellent. And I like to finish these. Yeah. Did I just say 126? I mean 124. Look at this. Look at this classic. Stop engine braking. Oh my gosh, people. This is the most popular area I've ever been in. I, I film here all the time. Was it coming to Alex's filming spot today? I don't even remember what I said now. Let's see if this makes any sense.